Hello everyone, it's Miss LaRose. Today we are looking at the art of American artist Jasper Johns. Jasper Johns is known for number and letter art. So today we will be looking at his work and creating some letter art using names. I need you to have a ruler and a piece of paper. With the ruler, you are going to divide your paper into sections. If you have a long name, you're going to want to put the paper the direction that I have it. But if you have a short name, you're going to want to turn it so that it's tall instead of wide. Then you need to split your paper into three sections. Normally, Jasper Johns would have those sections be even, but I'm fine if your sections are uneven. This is just to get a little bit of ruler drawing practice in. You need to hold the ruler down straight with one hand, press your pencil against the edge, and drag it along the side of the ruler to create a line. I have three sections now. They're a little bit different in size, but that's fine. Now I'm going to think about the name that I'm making, which has six letters. I'm going to do my nephew's name, which is Corbin. That means I have to create six sections, one section for each letter. So here I have my first two sections, and I'm moving my ruler and making sure that I have space for the other sections. This part might require a grown-up's help. So if you have a grown-up to help you, they can help you figure out how many boxes you need and how to space out your boxes so that you have enough spaces for the letters in your name. I do want you to try to draw the ruler lines by yourself though. The next step is to use crayons or if you have oil pastels, use those. And you're going to write one letter of your name in each box across the top. Corbin's name starts with a K, and I put that in the first box. Now I'm going to make an O, and every time I add a new letter, I'm going to switch colors. So the R in his name is going to be green. The next letter is a B, so I'm going to use this teal green blue kind of color. Next, in his name we have an I, so I'm switching colors again using purple. And after that, his name ends in an N. Now, whatever name you have, you are going to use the letters in your name. And I want you to switch colors for those as well. To do my next line, I'm using the same name again. We're going to do a repetition project where it has the same thing over and over again, except I'm going to use the colors in the same order, but shifted. So you can see the N was yellow, so I switched to yellow for the beginning instead of the end, and then I went back to the start of my pattern and did my letters that way. You don't have to do your letters the same color pattern as me. You can do them in whatever color pattern you want. It's all up to you. I just did it this way so I could keep track of what colors I was using and not use two of the same color directly next to each other. Now I have two rows of the name done. My final color was purple on that line, so it's going to be my first color on the next line. Sometimes with crayon, you have to press a little bit harder than you do with oil pastel. So if you are using crayon, I want you to make sure you make your lines nice and thick and that you press hard because the crayon for this project is not as smooth and thick as an oil pastel would be, but they do both work for this project. I'm coming down to my very last letter, and that's going to be the final N, and I can move on to the next step. Now I'm going to hide my pencil lines and create borders around my letters. And this time I went to my very last letter, which was the teal blue N. And I'm using that to create a box around all of the purple letters. 
then I'm going to create boxes around all my other letters using the other colors so the box and the letters do not match. And again, for this, you don't have to use a pattern to figure out what colors you're using. You can use whatever colors you like, whatever colors you want. I'm going to put a yellow box around the orange letters. And then I'm just going to keep boxing in all of my letters and hiding all those pencil lines underneath the crayon and the oil pastel. Well, my boxes are almost finished. I have my final box, which I'm doing in purple around the yellow letters. And then I can move on to the next step, which is to add paint. However, if you do not have paint, you can fill in your white spots or you can leave this blank. I'm going to add one additional step for my project that you do not have to do. And that step is to create bubble letters around your other letters. I did this just to make them stand out more, but you do not have to do this step. This step was just for me, because I like how it looks this way. If you like how it looks, you can try it, but you do not have to. This part's optional. I think it just makes the letters stand out a little bit more helps create a new style of drawing the letters as well because the bubble letter kind of goes around the shape of the letter instead of just being the letter itself. Now it's time to paint! Again, if you don't have paint, you can either leave it like this or you could use your markers and crayons and colored pencils to just color in the white spots. It's up to you. Similar to how I did the boxes, I'm going to use the same color paint for letters that are the same color. So this time, my orange letters are going to have green paint. I don't have to do it this way. I could have done random colors for the whole thing. I could have done rainbow colored boxes for all the letters. This is just the way I decided to do it. You can change it up if you want to have colors that are all the same for one line and then they change for the second line, that's fine. Or you could do two colors in the same box, that's fine too. It's all up to you. So I'm adding all of these colors now in the order that they appear in the watercolor paint tray. So I started with green, then I moved to yellow, then I moved to orange, so then my next color is going to be red. And after I do red, I'm at the end of the paint tray, but I don't want to use black or brown. If you have those colors and you want to use them, I don't mind if you use them. I think that black or brown though tend to be pretty dark and sometimes they cover up what you've already created. So if you're going to use black or brown, just make sure you don't make it too dark. One way you can tell if it's too dark is if it doesn't let your letter show up. So with this purple, I ended up with purple paint on top of purple crayon. I made it too dark in the corner of the K, so I just added more water on top of that to get rid of the darkness in that corner so that that K would still show up. Now my last box is going to be blue on the yellow letters. And I think that those turned out really good together the blue and the yellow stand out really well. And I'm down to my final box, almost finished, and it's all done. I hope you have fun making this project. 